Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new motor ESC and propeller test stand from Landian RC. Even though I recently just got this motor thrust stand and I only used it a few times in conjunction with this ampere meter ESC and also this flight controller, I didn't find this solution to be very user friendly and it also doesn't enable you to log the data whereas the Landian RC solution is integrated it also logs the data to a micro SD card and I think that it's going to enable me to test motors on my channel in a more efficient way. So let's start by opening the box and see everything we're getting inside. First of all we're getting a USB micro SD card reader two XT60i connectors, these are not XT60 because they have the interface in the center that is going to be connected to the signal pad of the ESC so we have the option to connect directly to the ESC so we have the battery plus, ground and then the signal connector and you also have the option to connect the ESC using a servo connector finally covered with this protective foam we can find the thrust end it comes with a micro SD card which is already inserted inside this is a 128 megabytes micro SD card which I really didn't know that they are still manufacturing but still it's going to be more than enough to store all the data from our tests on the center of the test stand we can find a 2.5 inch LCD touch screen we have this dial that controls the throttle if you are using manual mode we're gonna get to it later in this video we have these buttons that are going to enable us to switch between the modes again I'm going to get to it when I'm going to show you how the testing is done powering the test stand is done with LiPo batteries with XC60 connector between 6 to 40 volts over here we have the connector for the ESC I'm going to use this connector which means I'm going to solder it to the ESC and this is going to be connected to the signal pad of the ESC and on the front we have this placement for the motor the distance between the motor mounting holes is between 8.3 to about 20.4 millimeters so now after mounting the Timoto F40 Mark III motor and I also soldered it to this ESC I can plug the XT60i connector and now I can power the thrust end As you can see, it first displays this warning that you have to make sure that everything is okay before using the thrust end, so make sure that it is used in a safe environment. Then press OK. And now we can see this screen. Let's go over the display data. First of all, we can see the weight in grams. So you can see when I press the motor thrust stand, it goes up, and if I pull it, it will display a negative value. It can measure up to 10 kilograms. Then we have the efficiency value, which I'm going to explain to you how it's calculated later when I'm going to analyze the data. Then we have the time in seconds that is used for the motor auto testing interval. You can set it between 2 to 5 seconds using this button over here, but first you would have to start the test in order to set it. Then we have the voltage of the battery, the current ampere that is drawn from the battery, and then the watt, which is simply calculated by multiplying the volt with the ampere. Pressing the dot button is going to display the result from the last test. First you have to start and finish a test in order to display it. Then we have the set button that is going to take us to the power meter setting screen so you can adjust the voltage of the battery. So if you need to calibrate it you can just measure it and then adjust it accordingly using the plus or the minus buttons. You can also adjust the current and then you can also adjust the pull so if you want to calibrate the weight you will need to place for example a one gram weight on the top of the weight and then you'll need to set it to one gram and press ok in order to calibrate it you can also press reinit so you can see right now i set the voltage to 15.5 volts which is not correct so after pressing reinit it's going to reset it to the start value if you wish to format the micro sd card you can simply press the format button it's not going to prompt you so after pressing it, it's just going to erase all the data on the micro sd card Hitting OK is going to exit this screen and finally we have this button that is going to start the test it's going to ask you if the PWM is equal to 1000 which means you have to make sure that this knob is all the way down you don't want to start the testing with the knob not being set to 1000 because then the motor is just going to start as soon as you press the OK so make sure the knob is down and then you can press OK and now you can see when I rotate the dial the motor spins so you can see now it's working if you wish to perform an emergency stop you will have to long press the stop button and you can see now it stopped all the buttons need to be pressed at least one second in order to change the data so for example you can see when i press the start we can also change the interval of the automatic testings 
So you can see that just a short press of the S button is not going to make a difference, but if you're going to press it for one second, you can see that now it was changed to four, five, and back to two. If you need to calibrate the weight and bring it to zero, long press the button next to the T, and you can see that now it's set to zero. The next thing I'm going to do is to use this Gemfriend Flash 5152 propeller in order to perform a test. But before using the propeller, I would like to show you something. In order to calculate the efficiency, you will need the motor to press the thrust end. But if you're going to place the propeller just as you use it on your quadcopter, for example, like that, it's going to pull the motor, which means you're going to get a negative value. So I'm not sure why, but Lanch and RC are not using the absolute value of the weight, which in my opinion they should have done, and maybe they're going to release an update that is going to fix it. So what you will need to do if you want to measure the efficiency is to place the propeller in the reverse direction. Another option that you can do is just to use it the normal way, and then you can just calculate the efficiency by yourself. It's pretty simple, and I'm going to show you how it's done after performing the auto test. Now after securing the thrust stand, of course this is just temporary, and it's recommend to use some screws, I can start the auto testing. So first I'm going to press start and then you can choose the program that you would like to test. Long pressing M1 is going to start program 1 which is going to cycle between 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100 percent throttle. It's going to use the settings from the time which means now it's going to use a two seconds interval but if you're going to press a longer period up to five seconds it's going to use that value long pressing m2 is going to cycle between 25 50 75 and 100 percent throttle and finally m3 is going to cycle between 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 percent throttle so let's start with m1 Okay, so now the test is over. Now it's still working. So if you're going to move this dial, it's going to work. So make sure to long press the stop button in order to stop it. Now let's test M2. It was hard to see before, but over here it shows you the current value of the throttle. So hopefully now you're going to be able to see. So first let's hit start and then press the M2 button for a second. And you can see that now it didn't work well because the voltage is way down, I didn't notice, and there is no warning about it, so make sure not to deplete the battery. So I'm going to switch to a different battery, hopefully I didn't damage it. So now I'm going to use this battery instead, I'm going to perform the first test again because towards the end the voltage was too low. And I think we found a small issue with this test stand, I think it could have been advisable to set a voltage that just won't let you go beneath it because you might damage your battery if you're going to deplete it. So now let's connect this battery. And let's start the first test again. Before that I'm going to format the micro SD card because the data that I've got is not valid. So let's format it, hit start, and now we can press M1. Okay, now you can see the data by pressing the data button and we can see all the values. It was also saved to the micro SD card. If you're going to perform a manual test, it's not going to save it. So this is one of the advantages of using the auto test. So I think that we have enough data and I'm not going to perform M2 and M3 test. First of all, because M1 covers both tests. And second of all, it's getting pretty late and I don't want to disturb my neighbors. So now I'm going to show you what was saved on the contents of the micro SD card. So this is the file that was saved on the micro SD card. It's a CSV file which stands for comma separated values. You know, to properly open it, you need to use a program such as Excel or Numbers if you're using Mac. So let's open it up. And you can see that the data is properly organized inside this table. So you can see over here the number of the test. And then the first line is the percentage of the throttle. I'm just going to add some data in order for us to better understand what we're seeing then the volt of the battery. So for example, when the throttle was at 60%, the average voltage of the battery was 16.44 volt. Then we can see the ampere that was drawn from the battery. P, which is watt, which is the multiplication of the volt and the ampere. 
After that, we can see the total lift. So for example, when the throttle was at 50%, the motor was pulling at 470 grams. And when it was 100%, it was lifting 1.268 kilograms. And finally, the efficiency value, which is calculated by dividing the weight with the P. So the higher the number gets, it means that the motor is more efficient because after all, it grams per watt, which means that if the motor is more efficient, it's going to pull more grams or more weight for every watt spent. So as you could see, the data that is gathered by this thrust stand is very clear and it's going to enable me to compare different motors and different propellers and you can also produce some graphs in order to show the difference between the motors and propellers in a very convenient way. As for the product itself, I think this is a much better thrust stand than the one I used to have. It provides an all-in-one solution, it is user-friendly and also very simple to operate and at about $116, I don't think it's very pricey. It does suffer from a few flaws, which should be pretty easy to fix as long as this device supports software updates. I'm not sure if it's possible, but I'm going to reach out to Lanch NRC and give them my complete feedback. First of all, they should add a battery voltage alarm because they want to prevent the situation that happened to me that the battery just got too low and it could have been easily prevented if you could set a minimum voltage per cell and then an alarm would go off or simply abort the test. In addition, I think that short pressing the stop button should abort the testing, even though they set it for one second because they want to prevent the other buttons from being pressed, I think the stop button should be an emergency button, and as long as you short press it, it should simply abort the test. I think it's also advisable after the auto test to abort the test, because you could see that after performing an automated test, you could still use the dial, and I think it could be pretty dangerous because you thought that the test is over, but then you can rotate it and you can cut your finger which is going to lead me to the final conclusion that you should be really careful when using this device because you can easily cut your finger and you don't want it to happen and be careful and as long as it's connected, treat it like an armed quadcopter. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, I think it could have been also great if the lifting was measured as an absolute value because it doesn't matter if you pull it or you press it, after all, it measures thrust and also it could calculate the efficiency without having to manually do it on your calculations. It's pretty easy to calculate, but still an absolute value could have been better. And I also think that it could have been nice if they added a power switch, which could also help you to shut it down in case of emergency. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this device, feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.